guys, um, this is your girl. Her name is Talisha, and I'm about to record for love and all that's in between. So stay tuned. Of course, I'm trying to, you know, like I said, make that content and get it out there for you guys. So thanks again for watching. And again, my um the one I did for Valentine's Day is up on my channel. Her name is Talisha on YouTube. So please check it out. Please, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, bye bye. Hello, you guys. It's your girl Talisha here. Um, or shall I say her name is Talisha and um, we're doing our love and all that's in between tonight so let's get into some topics I got some notes jotted down right here um, they are very very a little bit all over the place but I do want to tell you guys I listened to the Dear uh, future wifey podcast today when I tell you Kev on stage and his wife be dropping them gems they were like they went to therapy and like they were like saying how therapy really uh, a licensed therapist is the way to go um you know because you know sometimes we look to our pastor um or just people in the church to uh, you know, do those premarital counseling and things like that, and they just may not be licensed or uh, you know professionals in that area um, to give you the real um, life tips that we actually need. You know, and and you know, just because people have been married for years does not mean they they have the tips that we need to continue on into our relationship and i just felt like that was such a good you know good statement to say that uh therapy is good therapy is something that we all can benefit from especially um individuals and as well as in our partnerships um so i was like all right, I got to touch on some of the subjects, and it's crazy because I did a podcast. I want you guys to go check it out, um, and I I actually was talking about some of the stuff they were talking about. I was like, look at me, and I ain't even been married, okay? So, I was just like, they, they are... They are doing a thing, and I love their transparency. I loved how they were just like, you know pulling on each other's strengths like that was just beautiful because even in re you know any type of relationship with your sibling or your mother or your you know significant other you could use that like you know especially in a business partner when you're in a business partner with them you know you're in business with someone you want to pull on the strengths because if you don't you're going to make that person you know, feel weak or look, you know, weak, you know, in that area, like, no, pull on the strengths and you guys will succeed every time, you know, because like, at the end of the day, if I'm with you, I'm betting on you every time. And I love that. I was like, she's like, I'm betting. I was like, yes, I want to bet on my man. I want to feel safe with my man, period. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. So, all right. So now we're going to get into the topic of being a new single mommy. That's where I'm at. I am a new single mommy. Well, I mean, I've pretty much been a single mother since I was pregnant, literally. So, you know, we can start from there. Like, since I thought I was pregnant, you know, yeah, yeah. The partner, he didn't want to continue the relationship anymore, but I knew I didn't want to have an abortion. And I really i prayed to have the children we planned to have children and things like that and but our relationship wasn't really going how he expected it to go so it kind of you know did you know just took a toll i guess i really don't know but literally within two weeks he was like oh no i'm not doing this and x y and z so basically i've been a single parent since i conceived basically um but just saying that, like, I've been, you know, my child is three now. So since 2020, now it's 2024. It's been four years since I've been single. Um, you know, even though she wasn't born yet, um, you know, I was pregnant, but I, I was just going through so much, you know, as far as just mentally not feeling good enough or just you know struggling with the 
oh, I'm going to be another statistic, you know what I mean? Going through that, uh, you know, mental battle with that as well. So, and now then fast forward to like giving birth and just being in my mom's house and, you know, not really living on my own and actually being on my own, like, it's kind of scary, you know what I mean? It's a scary thing. Um, but I can say God has been good to me. I'm very happy. I'm very grateful for where he has me going. He is really showing up in my life right now. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't give God thanks. Um, but, you know, we also, this is a reality podcast, so we're going to keep it real, like, how how do you get back out there how do you find yourself after you know waiting around for um you know how do you find yourself after waiting around for your child's father to come back around to come back into the picture and that's just that just wasn't god's plan for me and you know now i look back and i thank you thank you jesus because you know we just we, we were unequally yoked, you know, that's just what it was, like, I, I am a creative person, I am a, I'm not gonna say a dreamer, per se, because I, you know, I'm very, I'm very strategic in what I like to do, um, so, but I, I have plans, and I'm like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I, I don't, I don't put a limit on myself, you know what I'm saying, so since I don't put a limit on myself, it is hard to be with someone who limits themselves, and, you know, uses that word, you can't do that, you, no, 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 not over here, because we don't do that, <laughs> if, if I, if I see that I'm able, and I'm creative, and I'm good at something, oh, maybe I'm taking it to the next level, you know what I'm saying, so I, that's, that's, and that's the person I am, I literally, when I got pregnant, life just broke just broke all into little, little little pieces so um right before i found out i was pregnant i literally had this um i i still had i just kind of revamped it um my bossy campaign page is my organization where um i was about to host an event um you know bringing entrepreneurs out setting up their tables um and they were, I had my aunts come out to speak about uh, financial literacy. I had um, someone there who um, could speak to how to promote your business and how to like take, you know, pictures, you know, just give a little bit more insight on how to promote yourself, um, but also have that financial literacy as well. And also just getting out there to, it's kind of like, you know, hey, we're here this is what we do and just experience and and like everything was just falling into place every like people i had people excited about this because it was just something that was good and new you know nobody has ever done it in that particular uh city um so i was very excited to get in get on to that so long story short that i was pregnant um this is january 16 2020 painting the picture um i woke up i was off that it was a thursday i was off i do i was off so i woke up took a pretty set i was like mm, my period it actually had came on but not came on and i was like mm, this ain't right so and then it disappeared so i was like let me take work instead so i was pregnant I was, I was so happy i was very 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 happy um two hours later I was doing nails at the time. Um, I was doing nails. I got a call from my job and was like, oh, we don't need you to come in anymore. Um, and I was like, what's going on? You know, they were laying people off, basically. But I'm like, dang, I got fired on my day off, which was crazy. Same day I was pregnant, mind you. Then about two weeks later, um, child's father was like, this isn't what I want. I, you know, you know, I, you're going to be a single parent, basically. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So... That is pretty much how that happened. Then I was, you know, people were like, oh, you should, you know, get an abortion. That's, I never believe in abortion. So that was never going to be a thing for me. Um, you know, and I was like, well, if God didn't want me to have this child, it was a lot of ways he could have took it out, <laughs> you know. Um, but that didn't happen, thank the Lord. And we have 
a healthy three and the ways that people may perceive you while you're going through your journey and the thing about it is you're the only one going through your journey yes there's other single mothers out there but nobody is going through your exact journey nobody has your mindset nobody is you okay you're the only person on this earth with your dna okay so for people to tell you how you should deal with the issue um it's you know it's kind of insensitive you know um you know yes we want to take because you know uh what is it what, what we're looking for we want to take advice we can take advice but honestly what you the best thing you need to do is shut everybody out and listen to god like that is what has gotten me to where I'm at today is shutting people out, shutting my mind down. And really, it may not even be things of your mind. Like my mind is really, I, I can I can focus on, on God, you know, at, at, at a drop of a hat. But, you know, over time, you have people, um, you know, parents, siblings, friends, TV, social media, you know they'll pour into you and they'll they'll say things they'll pour fear into you they're, they're they'll do things or make you feel like you're not doing enough and that's when you gotta shut everything down you need to fast you need to pray you need to hear god hear him for what he's saying to you and where he wants your life to go because sometimes he just wants you to sit still not saying like don't be doing nothing but rest your mind he gives you he does not give you the spirit of fear. He gives you the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. Always keep that close to your heart. And that is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Keep it close in your heart and understand that is the power of God. Giving you the power, the, the first the power to overcome fear because it is a spirit. Then the power to love you know love yourself and be graceful with yourself because it is a fleshly thing but also giving you a sound mind to where it's quiet so only you can only tune into to god himself and see what he has a plan for you because his plans for you are good and to prosper you always okay so we always tune into god um um and I, I think i i do pretty good you know on certain levels but you know it'd be days when i'm like yo i want to cut some people out or I, I, I i'm i'm feeling i'm feeling it today and you know we're human we, we, we're allowed to feel we're allowed to um be here and be in our feelings we are because i i need to experience my feelings if i don't experience my feelings I'll be, I don't know where I'll be, but I allow myself to feel what I'm feeling. I sit down. I am very keen on uh, self-discovery. Like, what, how can I, what am I doing wrong? Or how, why do I feel this way? What is the root cause of my anxiety, my fear, whatever it is? I try to get down to the root of it because I do not want to, I don't want to stay there. Who wants to stay crying? I don't know. I know some people that want to do that or they're okay or that's just their safe space i don't i, I don't get comfortable nowhere because god is always moving and i don't know where he taking me <laughs> okay but i know it's a, i know it's good i mean even even where i'm at right now like it's crazy like the same not not necessarily the same thing happened to me but literally i lost i lost my job um what happened uh you know i lost place where i was living um little relationship thing situation with relationship but yeah little little love situation you know fell apart real quick um but i was like i know i i when all that happened within within a week from each other like literally all of that happened i would i smile and i said thank you god i know that's you because what you about to do you about you i, I mean not that i i didn't cry i cried a lot because I knew, like, I was like, man, you know, I never, never questioned God, never said why God, never said this, never that. But I, but I, you know, I do say, okay, what am I supposed to be learning right now? What am I supposed to be doing right now? Am I supposed to be fasting? I can't hear you right now because I'm, I'm, I gotta, because I hear everybody else and I gotta tune everybody out. I gotta fast. I gotta pray. I gotta, I gotta really get into my word because God want me to, God is showing me something. And what is it? You know what I mean? So that is really how I try to take on challenges when life is challenging me and thank God for the people who God sends to help you and you know don't ever let pride and ego get in the way when people are trying to help you you know even if 
you know, it, it may came, come from somebody that, you know, wasn't fond of you before. But hey, if that if God sent them in your life, you need to know when God sends people in your life. So that's why you really have to shut everybody down, shut the world down, and hear him for what he has to say to you. Um, so, yeah. So to get back into the real subject about just being a single parent and trying to find yourself again, um, I feel like I'm just now getting into that space um, because... I was just kind of like floating by like, okay, who's going to come save me? Who's going to come save me? And it was a reality check. Like nobody's coming to save you, honey. You have to, you have to do the work. You have to paddle. You have to, this, this is your boat. Nobody, nobody's on this boat with you. You, you got to do the work. So that's, that was my wake up call. Like when, you know, find out, you know, finding out things about my child's father, I'm like, okay, you know, he was kind of feeding me dreams like, oh, we might get back together. Da, da, da. Wake up, wake up, wake up, honey. No, no, you're not. And it's okay because that's not where God wanted you to be in the first place. Um, you know, and, you know, I, oh, man, God is good. What do you know? I'm thinking about just how my life really played out right in front of my eyes, how I was back in Florida. Like, man, like, God really, really put me in a position to thrive. And he's, he really he really was putting me in the position to break some bad habits so to release some anger to really put me in a position to where i'm going right now like i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't have been prepared if god didn't put me through what i've been through like you know what i'm saying so i always give god the glory and god thanks and god the honor always every time always who we can bet on we can bet on jesus because i know a man because <laughs> i know a man that can do exceedingly in the bun you know above all things you know what i'm saying so you know a man. but anyway um uh anyways but yeah i am slowly finding myself back you know my child's three now she's being a little bit more self-sufficient um and I'm even even with parenting, you have to you have to tune people out because people want to tell you what to do with your child. Hey, all children aren't the same, and only God can really tell you like, okay, maybe look into this or maybe look into that or try this. Um, you know, if you if you need to, a therapist to help you with your child, do that too. Um, but as far as like every little thing, every little thing, you know, you're gonna be confusing your child. You don't want to confuse your child, so you know. Like, what I noticed, my child is extremely tender-headed. And when I do her hair, she cries the entire time. So, at one point, that got on other people's nerves. And it got it started to irritate me. But then I started to get irritated with her. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Because, you know, I'm not in your shoes. But there's babies that are extremely tender-headed out there. And that is exactly what they do. And that is okay. So, you know, we can't say, well, she, she, you know what, because she cried on it. No, 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 no. But that's not how we're going to handle it. No. So, um, you know, just, try, uh, you know, finding out ways to handle situations and to hear God and hear how he wants you to handle it is, is top tier. It's, it's top tier. And I recommend it to everybody. Okay. But, um, yeah. So, anyways, um, I'm going to jump into the next subject so let's get right into that All right, so the first well. topic is going to be if i'm with you i'm not against you i do trust you but we also have to understand that we have fears and we have doubts and so does our partners at some point in time it's like okay i want to trust you but i do have questions like where are we going how are we getting from point a to point b and um and, and, and it's okay that you give your advice or you give your point of view and you might you guys may like okay well ultimately you want the man to make the decision or you know vice versa i prefer my man to make you know make decisions but at the same time i prefer that i am able to 
rely on him to listen to me to make a safe space for me to actually open up and ask my questions because me i am very inquisitive i will ask about a thousand and five questions but i can understand how also that is frustrating to the man to feel like oh well you don't trust me you don't trust my leadership or my guidance to where i'm taking you and i don't ever want my man to ever feel like he is you know not in control of the situation or you know i'm like of course you, you cannot control your partner and i never want my partner to ever feel um that i can't be submissive to him so we always want to keep in mind that our partners you know they love us and we love them and we want to make sure that they feel heard and also feel safe to express themselves um in a way to where it's like okay well i understand your fears i understand your frustrations about where we're going um i do need you to trust me but i also hear what you're saying and it's our valid points and so let's make a contingency okay so my next subject is pretty much building a legacy so my goal is to be married one day and I really like I pray to God all the time and God has really revealed a lot of things to me um, and he just he just keeps revealing I'm just like okay God okay God okay <laughs> you know what I mean so the fears that I used to have surrounding marriage I don't really have them anymore um, I just I just pray that my spouse continues to seek God as well and to hear God as well while we're together like you know once we are married I pray that he continues to seek God because you know just as we can become into his will you know you can fall out of his will and you know what I mean so I don't want you I don't want my spouse to fall out of his will and you know same for same for me like i don't want to be in the relationship and we're just not doing what god called us to do because marriage is a ministry and you know i, I want to make sure that we are striving to educate and be a blessing and be a ministry um you know while we are married you know so the legacy building a legacy is a thing for me like i want you to always strive to wants want me you know what i mean like you know never let never go to bed angry like that is that is a in the scripture don't go don't do not let your head down angry do not give the devil that foothold on you um you know with the attitude you know angry attitude you know those type of things because now you uh you allow them to fester in your spirit and now you have to really you know what i mean so oh yeah so i was saying i i listened to the dear future wifey podcast today and um miss melissa like she she made it so plain it was so good she said it's like i have a stain on my carpet it's filled you know today but as time go on you know it's like oh I, you know it's spilled but you have to go to work and you just kept moving and you know as the days passed you just kept going you just kept going and you know then you turn around it's a, you know it's a few weeks or a year later and that saying is still there um but now you have to you know you have to really put in that elbow grease you really gotta call a steam you know call a carpet cleaner to get that stain out if in versus if you would have you know address the issue at hand when it happened um so i just felt like that was a really good scenario when it comes down to not going to bed angry because when you go to bed angry or you know let it let whatever issues fester in your relationship it can become like that stain in the carpet and it's really going to take that elbow grease that extra help which could be which could be therapy which could be counseling you know it could be a lot of other things that it wouldn't have been necessary if we would have addressed it the first time um 
or you know when it when it freshly happened um and maybe you you know maybe you would have needed counseling then but it wouldn't have fested on so long to where for now you're holding on to resentment you know what i mean so um yeah i was like man that was really good that was really good uh scenario that she put together for us and um i was just like man like i really pray that my future my future husband um is just really kind and very uh selfless and very understanding um because i strive to be understanding like even with my child like you know even though she's three i'm just like okay lord help me understand what i need to provide for her because you know it gets frustrating especially when you know your, your child can't properly speak or whatever the case may be you want to be able to properly lead them because god has put them in your possession you know and i'm like okay well god you 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 handed me your child what am i supposed to do with this child how am i supposed to guide this child so when you know she is out in the world she is still very kind and selfless and she is showing those fruits of the spirit and she you know and she is being all that she can be for the glory of your kingdom because you know that's why she's here and you know i feel the same way as marriage like you know like okay holy spirit how can i teach me what i need so i won't uh so i won't frustrate my husband and, and vice versa you know what i mean you know like i know we're going to be frustrated those are things that are natural but we really want our i strive every day to understand people and i pray that my spouse is the same way and you know slow what is it slow to so quick to hear slow to anger and slow to speak I try. That is something that I have learned to do because I remember I, this is a recent situation for me. Um, very, very, very recent. I'm not gonna really like, get too much into it, but when it happened, when the situation happened, it was very, very disheartening, and I was like, I can really cuss this person out, but I ain't gonna do it. God, <laughs> I said, God, what I'm supposed to say to them? What am I supposed to say to them? And, you know, God didn't immediately say anything to me. I kept praying about it, kept praying about it, kept praying. Maybe like five or six hours later, God was just revealing. Because, I, you know, while I'm praying, I'm listening to gospel. I'm listening to scriptures. I'm listening, you know, I'm in the word. So that is how God speaks to me. So as I'm listening and as I'm asking God for the answer of how I should respond to someone, he gives it to me and I'm just so, and just so, so beautifully. And I'm just like, wow, like that is beautiful. Like, you know, and that's how I want people to respond to me, to take that time to say like, okay, you know, this is, this is just what God, you know, has spoke to me to speak to you. Um, and that's kind of how we live we have to die to ourselves daily like decrease lord de let allow me to decrease so you can increase in me so so that you may always get the glory you know what i mean it, it may not always seem like it's glory but when we are kind to people and we are saying the things that god wants us to say you know um and being truthful and honest but also being very kind and very uh selfless in it you know, God will always get the glory, how, however that may look, you know what I mean? So that is, you know, how I look at, you know, trying to build a legacy as far as just being selfless and making sure like how we die to ourselves daily with our, you know, our Heavenly Father, we have to die to ourselves daily with just people in general and you know so we want to die to ourselves daily in the relationship with our spouse and make sure that they are good like okay are you okay like you know checking in on them um just their, their mental health um and things like that and you know in uh, i've i've all now this thing i've always felt in my spirit that when you're married someone i'm so i'm supposed to be so invested in you and you're supposed to be so invested. So, like, basically, when they say, you know, the two become one, I know it's over time. But it's like, you know me so well. 
you you know you know what i'm saying like you know you you would know me and i know you so well that if you, it, you know before i walk upstairs you need a glass of water i'm gonna get that for you or if i'm in the bed you already know you know i can't, can't, can't I'm, i don't have to ask you you are gonna hand me the remote or you're gonna you know what i mean it's going to be that or you're gonna be so caring like oh did she cheat today or you know what i mean like you're we're gonna just sense each other and to continue to strive to do that is how we get to building our legacy you know what i mean so that is how i view that um but anyways i feel like we have gotten to our marker of the day i've had some other notes here but i may just touch up on them um tomorrow i'm gonna go ahead and get this edited and try to get this out to you guys um today is friday but you might see this either saturday or sunday um I but I, I do want to start doing um maybe incorporating like uh, a little bible study maybe maybe a little bit we'll see how that goes um either on a sunday or a wednesday so we'll see um I'm trying to get consistent, so putting myself on a schedule and all that good stuff. But anyway, you guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'm going to get better. I'm only going to get better from here. Um, I feel like I have so much more to speak upon and talk to you guys. And I've actually had some people volunteer to come and talk with me, and I love that. I, actually, I absolutely appreciate everyone for watching and whatever you have to give just come on and give it to me let's talk about it um and i feel like other people's insight it will also very much help as well so again this is a safe place a safe space to learn to speak your mind and just feel good about yourself so anyway thanks again for watching this is love and all that's in between and i'll speak with you another time. Thank you. Bye-bye.